Before this video starts, we are trying to hit 5,000 subscribers on this channel. So if you could drop a like, subscribe, and hit the post notification button, that would be greatly appreciated. Now, on to the video. Dinwiddie, Curry, lost it, vacuums it in. Oh, and he threw it away. And see, that's the problem sometimes, because you know they're standing white, up like the shirt, Benson, right? with a white jersey on, you think that's your team. That if you watched the Dallas Mavericks playoff game in the NBA postseason, then you may have spotted this guy on the sidelines. Well, this is Theo Pinston, who you may have seen in 2019 when the Brooklyn Nets had the most lit bench of all time. Well, he was constantly standing up and wearing the same colored t-shirt as the away team to the point where an NBA ref had to ask him to change his shirt pre-game. Hey, do me a favor, is this a crazy? Can you change your color shirt? Yeah. Thank you. Will you? I appreciate it. Well, he would be one of the main reasons why the league would be more strict this year on players sitting down and not being on the court while the game is in play. As you would see multiple players this year get warnings and technical fouls for being on the court. With some of them being outright ridiculous, such as the Draymond Green and Stephen Curry technical, as they would both get teed up for celebrating after their teammates had scored a basket with the game basically being over. But what if leaving the bench costed a team a chance at a championship? The 2007 NBA playoffs was a postseason filled with a numerous amount of unexpected playoff series. With the 8 seeded We Believe Warriors team upsetting the number one seeded Dallas Mavericks team who were the favorites to win the NBA championship after an incredible regular season with the 67 and 15 record, led by league MVP that year in Dirk Nowitzki. And the brilliance of a young star in LeBron James where LeBron would have an incredible 48 point game in game five with the series tied at two games apiece. Where James would score the Cavaliers last 25 points in a double overtime thriller including a game-winning layup to win the game 109 to 107. But the series that would have a series-altering event was the Western Conference semifinals in the Suns and Spurs series. In the 2006-2007 regular season, head coach at the time, Mike D'Antoni, fast-paced offense, as most people knew as the seven-second or less offense, was made to get the best quality of shots and baskets in the shortest amount of time before defenses could get set which would be a very unique style of play that the league was not accustomed to. With this style of play putting a lot of pressure on teams to sprint back on defense after their offensive trip, or the Suns would make them pay, which would wear down teams having to defend such a fast-tempoed offense for 48 minutes. As the Suns would finish third in the NBA in fast break points that year, led by their dynamic duo in Steve Nash and Amari Stoudemire. The Suns would finish the regular season with the second best record in the NBA and the second best record in the West with a 61 and 21 record, with them being only one of two teams to win 60 games that year, where they would face off against a great Spurs team with their big three in Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, and Mono Ginobili, who finished one seed below them in the regular season. Game one would be an intense back and forth game for majority of the game, with both teams coming ready to play after their first round victories. But the Spurs would have the upper hand for majority of the second half, leading by as much as eight points in the third quarter. But the Suns duo and Nash and Stoudemire would combine for 51 points to lead the way for the Suns and slowly chip away at the Spurs lead. But the Spurs would prevail, led by Tony Parker and the big fundamental, with Parker finishing with 32 points and eight assists and Tim Duncan finishing with 33 points and 16 rebounds to win a big game on the road. The next two games would be a split with the Suns bouncing back and winning game two and the Spurs winning game three to take a 2-1 lead on the series. In a must win game for the Suns to avoid going down 3-1 in the series, they would have to win a tough game on the road. So Steve Nash and Amari Stoudemire would answer the call as they would get off to an early lead in the first quarter. But the Spurs would respond and go on a run of their own to take the lead and extend it to double figures in the second half, leading by as many as 11 points in the third quarter and 10 in the fourth quarter. But Nash would help lead the Suns' comeback in the fourth quarter, scoring and facilitating to erase the Spurs' fourth quarter lead with them having a one-point lead with just under a minute to play. And with a behind-the-back pass to Amari for a layup over Tim Duncan, 
it would give the Suns a three point lead with 32 seconds left. On the next possession and Ginobili missing a layup that would have cut the lead to one point, the Suns would get a defensive stop and would just have to hold the ball and let the Spurs foul them and make free throws to seal the deal. But when Barbosa got the rebound and passed the ball to Nash and he was coming up the court, this happened. By Barbosa. And here is Nash being chased. And they had a oh, look out. As Ori sent Nash flying and Bell goes at Ori. Nash would get hip checked hard by Robert Ori into the scores table, which would cause Nash and some of his teammates to retaliate after the play. But you might have missed something when watching the play. So let's take a look at it one more time and tell me if you notice something. The corner played by Barbosa. And here is Nash being chased. And they had a oh, look out. As Ori sent Nash flying and Bell goes at Ori. If you look at the bench, Amari Stoudemire and Boris Dia were standing up on the bench as the play was going on, but would end up past the coach's box after the hip check by Robert Ori. Now, they weren't trying to intervene to escalate the situation, but were simply just checking to see if Nash was okay because he had already dealt with a nose injury during that series. But with the league rules, no players can leave the bench during a fight or scuffle, which is why during many fights and scuffles, the coaching staff will wall off the players in case they step onto the court. But unfortunately, nobody on the Suns bench would stop Boris and Omari from leaving the bench. When there's a disagreement, I always try to look myself in the mirror and say, what could I have done better? And that's one of the hardest things for everyone to do. So I was actually sitting on the bench next to Omari. So when it actually happened, spur of the moment, players jump up off the bench. I should have felt like, Amari! and grabbed onto him like Jeff Van Gundy did to Alonzo Mourning's leg. Like, I really wish I would have done that. The Suns would go on to win the game 104-98, but the league would give both Amari Stoudemire and Boris Diaw a one-game suspension for leaving the bench in game four. And Robert Ory would receive a two-game suspension as his foul on Nash would be upgraded to a flagrant foul. In game five and the Suns having to play without their star forward in Amari Stoudemire, the Suns supporting cast would step up big as the Suns would go on a 20-2 run in the first half, leading by as many as 14 points with a great contribution from Kurt Thomas and Sean Marion. But the poise of the Spurs would help them get back into the game, led by Tim Duncan and their six-man Manu Ginobili to get them back in striking distance. But the Suns would continue to increase their lead in the third quarter, but in the fourth quarter, Manu Ginobili would single-handedly take over the game to mount an incredible comeback for the Spurs and keep them in striking distance. But the Suns would continue to maintain their small lead with Steve Nash and Kurt Thomas delivering on the offensive end with the game all tied at 81. With under a minute to play, Bruce Bowen would hit a clutch three-pointer from the corner to give the Spurs a three-point lead. And with the Suns having one last chance to tie the game, Nash would shoot a three-pointer at the top of the key but his shot would come up short and his foot would be on the line and the Spurs would win a big game five on the road to take a 3-2 lead on the series. With the Suns being down 3-2 and on the verge of elimination, the Suns duo would lead the way with both Nash and Stoudemire finishing with a double-double, with Steve Nash finishing with 18 points and 14 assists, and Stoudemire finishing with 38 points and 12 rebounds along with a contribution from Sean Marion, who also had a double-double with 11 points and 11 rebounds. But it wouldn't be enough as the Spurs' big three in Parker, Ginobili, and Duncan would come up big when needed. As Parker would finish with 32 and six, Ginobili with a double-double with 33, 11, and six, and the big fundamental in Tim Duncan would top it off with a near triple-double with 24 points, 13 rebounds, and nine blocks. To defeat the Suns in six games and advance to the Western Conference Finals as they would go on to defeat the Utah Jazz 4-1 and sweep the Cleveland Cavaliers to win their fourth championship in franchise history. So that concludes the incident in game four that may have cost the Suns a chance at winning an NBA championship. With the incredible upset the Warriors had against the number one seeded Dallas Mavericks, would open a lot of doors for teams in the Western Conference to make it out the West. And with the Suns having home court advantage against San Antonio that series, the addition of having Amari Stoudemire in Game 5 would have been huge 
as the Suns would have a huge lead for majority of the game and could have definitely contributed offensively and defensively to potentially take a 3-2 lead and also potentially win the series in six games. And had they had gotten to the NBA Finals, they would match up against a young LeBron James and the Cavaliers. Although they would have to be dealing with a young superstar talent in LeBron James, the depth of the Suns surrounding their two star players in Nash and Stoudemire, such as Sean Marion, Raja Bell, Boris Diaw, Barbosa, James Jones, Kurt Thomas, as well as their fast paced offense, would play a factor giving them the upper hand against Cleveland to win the NBA Finals. But obviously in a fantasy world that would have taken place. But we can't live in the what ifs, so let me know in the comments down below. Do you guys think if Amari Stoudemire and Boris Diaw didn't get suspended in game 5, would it have changed the outcome of the series with them having home court advantage? I think that was probably Phoenix's best chance to win a title. They were right in their sweet spot, Nash was in his prime. Yeah, that's one that Suns fans will always look back on and shake their heads, but uh, it was their best opportunity to knock off San Antonio. It changed the complexion of the series, and uh, I'm sure the Phoenix Suns to this day are thinking, what if, perhaps, if our guys were there, it would have been a completely different story. Let me know down below. Like always, like, comment, share, subscribe. Follow my socials down below, and I'll see you in the next video.